Hospitals are intriguing places to work. In one room, you might have someone holding their child for the first time, and in another, someone holding theirs for the last. In some cases, there are patients who return, seemingly from the brink of death, and tell amazing stories of what they encountered on the other side. There are reports of miracles, but also strange happenings. Here are five scary stories from hospital workers that will make you think twice about attending medical school or decide to take a stroll around a hospital. Number five, The Vanishing Girl. The following story is told by a male nurse shortly after starting their new position at the hospital. I had only been working as a nurse for a few months when I experienced the following unusual event. I was taking a young girl from ER to day surgery for an endoscopy. After dropping off the girl, I decided to return to ER via the scenic route. As I walked down the hallways, I found them deserted. This area used to be the paediatric wing but had been closed for many years. Now, there was nothing but empty halls, rooms, and abandoned equipment. As I approached the nurse's station at the T-junction of the hallway that led to the elevators, my attention was suddenly drawn to a little girl standing with her head down at the end of the hall, across from the nurse's station. The girl was wearing a brown dress and white shoes. She was also holding a brown teddy bear. I thought that she might have wandered away from the family in the waiting room in the day surgery. I figured she was lost, and then asked her what she was doing, and beckoned her to come over. But as I was walking towards her, I was about 15 feet away when she completely vanished. All the hairs on my body stood on end, and in a panic, I ran down the hallway to the elevator. I hit the button for the ER, which felt like an eternity, before the elevator finally arrived. I walked to the nurse's station in the ER, white as a sheet, and one of the nurses ever asked what was wrong. When I finished telling my story, the nurse nonchalantly told me that I'd ran into the little ghost girl, who'd been around the hospital for years. Apparently, the ghost girl had been seen in the ER too. She was known to wander between the patient rooms and peek around curtains. Workers on other floors told of patients complaining that there was a little girl running around their room. Number 4. The Last Meal An old lady arrived into the hospital by ambulance and appeared near death. She was listed as DNR or Do Not Resuscitate. There were no family members that accompanied her, and she was placed in ER. She was barely responsive, pale, cool, her breathing was irregular, and her heart rate was unstable. They turned down the lights and left her hooked up to a monitor, essentially waiting for her to let go and die. Around an hour later, she stood at the door of her room. She had somehow managed to get up and dress herself. One of the nurses approached the elderly lady, where she told us that she was hungry. They didn't know what else to do, so they got her a chair and table and a tray of food from the cafeteria. She sat at the table and ate her food and chatted to the staff. Around an hour later, she told the nurse that she was tired and said she wanted to lie down again. They got her back into bed like she wanted where she passed away peacefully within 30 minutes. Number three, it's like the dead are leaving. The following incident took place in the intensive care unit of a small community hospital. They have a nine bed unit that is closed off from the medical floor with two doorways. On this particular night, some staff members were sitting around the station chatting amongst themselves when they could hear the sound of footsteps coming down the hall the unit was completely open, so they could always see every room no matter where they were. There was no one else in the unit with them. 
The CT scanning area was below them, but they closed at 5pm, unless there was an emergency. There were some people on the second floor, and the third was used as a storage, so there was no one on the floor above. This happened a couple of times. The following night, things got more intense, with doors opening and closing on their own, in two empty rooms. One of the staff asked what was happening, and it was explained to them that this would often happen when someone passes away or if their death was sudden. So it appears that some spirits do not necessarily float away. On this occasion, they decided to walk out as if they were walking out of hospital. Maybe they did not realise they were dead. Number two, don't let them take me. The following story was told by a nurse while she was working in an oncology ward at the hospital. There was a patient that was in the midst of passing away and at that point had been unconscious for a few days. At one point the nurse went into the room and found the patient was conscious and crouched at the top of the bed. The patient looked at her and said, don't let them take me. The nurse then asked the patient, who is going to take them? She pointed up into the air and said that there was a dark presence and they were trying to take her away. She died just minutes later. Whatever took her away, I hope it took her to a better place. Number one, two places at once. The following strange story is told by a worker that happened in a state institute for the developmentally disabled. We had been moved to another building temporarily while they remodel our old building. I was on my second shift of the night and we had a locked psychiatric intensive care unit. I spotted one of the residents walking down the hall. They had a distinct gait and were wearing a bright yellow shirt with a happy face on it. I went to the ward and warned the staff that one of their patients had escaped. This was no ordinary escapee either. The resident in question, Larry, was known to ingest anything he could find, from pens and belts to even birds' nests. He was also reluctant to return to the ward, which is why I didn't try to get him myself when I saw him. Larry required two escorts. We got back into the hall no more than 15 seconds later, and Larry had completely vanished. We looked through the entire building and couldn't find him anywhere. The search lasted less than 10 minutes and everyone got involved to make sure he couldn't escape. I was about to call the house supervisor and tell them we'd lost the patient when Larry walks out of the bathroom with a member of staff. Apparently he spent the past half an hour or so getting his bath. I swore that I'd seen him in the hallway. I would have never left the ward short-staffed if I wasn't sure that it was him. He does have a distinctive gait and look, and was wearing unique clothes. Everyone thought that I was crazy. However, what I discovered next really shocked me. Larry had an identical twin who had passed away in that building 10 years ago.